So I just saved $10,000 in taxes using AI. But here's the thing, it's not just about taxes. I'm going to walk you through my exact process of what I used here. So once you understand it, you can apply this process really to anything, whether it's legal advice, business strategy, health optimization, whatever else. We're going to turn ChatGPT and Claude into our own custom consultant at a fraction of what it costs for the real thing. Let me show you what I figured out. So the first part of our process is a reverse interview. So this is where we're going to utilize AI to get what's in our head into AI's head. So we're trying to make what's implicit explicit. Here we have our brain, here we have AI's brain. And the reverse interview with AI is going to help it understand more context of what we're trying to achieve, our intent, our history, et cetera. And the way this works is we have us, this is a baby version of me, and then we have a model we're talking to. So in this case, when we're using models, I tend to prefer using a smaller reasoning model that's fast as well as smart. Reason being is you don't want to wait forever for it to ask you questions. Because in the end, what's going to happen is you're going to prompt it initially, and that prompt's going to state that I want to do an interview where you ask me one question at a time, where every answer I provide you, it informs the next question you ask. And that's kind of what this bouncing back and forth is, where you probably should have a box here. So it asks us a question, we answer it ask us a question, we answer it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And at the very end of this, when we're finished, the AI is then going to consolidate and synthesize all the insights it derived from this conversation and put it into an overall document that we can then use in the future to create a more informed system prompt. So this is the overall interview process, um, kind of in the visual ramifications. And after we've gotten this document, we actually, before we move into that, I want to show you the prompt I use here. So this here is a specific prompt that we'll use to start this conversation off. So this prompt here that I'm going to show you is going to be the one initially that kicks off this conversation. And you can, you can abstract this prompt away to apply to, like I said, anything. So you can use this for deep research tasks. You can use it for both taxes and health, et cetera. So at the beginning, we have the role that we're stating out and we're starting with. So the role of the AI is that you're an expert, at you're, you're an expert in tax specialist. And uh, you know everything there is to know about accounting and tax associated to business. So this is giving it a role. Next, I'm going to give it a task. So first, what I need you to do is I need you to ask me a series of questions, one question at a time. Every answer I provide informs the next question that you ask. So you're able to get the full 360 understanding of my business. So we can get a uh, so you can give me better targeted advice based off of my situation. The next part of the task is at the end of this conversation, you'll summarize all the key findings that you found to help me inform another accountant's ability to advise me include all of the details. So this is, goes to the summarization point where it's going to create that synthesized document we can pass off to another AI. After it has a task and a role, we're then going to give it some context. So the initial context we're going to give is I'll give you some context to start. So the business is a blank type corporation. So this is the, this is the bracket where you fill this in if you're using this for taxes. But remember, you can apply this really to any other use case. So you're going to say business, uh, this is the type of corporation. Um, it's registered in this location. We operate out of this location. That's some context. And we're going to give some additional context here with the documents. So we're basically attaching documents that you have that you think are relevant for this AI to understand to inform the questions that it's going to ask you to ensure that it's making the most out of the interview. So some of these documents that I provided were previous tax, tax documents, um, incorporation documentation, et cetera. Um, in addition to that, I've also stated the industry that the company's inside of, the offering they provide, and the benefit the client gets from that offering. And then also my name. It already knows my name if it's ChatGPT, but Claude sometimes doesn't remember. So I give my name as well. So if any of the documents contains my name, it knows how to discern and differentiate between myself and the rest of the people in that document. So this is the starter prompt that's going to kick off this conversation. This conversation will probably, I would say, take 15 to 20 turns, meaning you'll get 15 to 20 questions and you'll give those answers. At the end, there's two things. One is if the conversation keeps running on and you feel like you've got enough, you can just stop it and say, hey, this is enough. Let's, um, can you synthesize the conversation into a document and it'll do so. And or it'll come to a natural conclusion where it'll say anything else you want me to ask when it asks that usually after 18 to 20 or 15 to 20 turns, you can say, no, you're good. And it'll synthesize the conversation. So that's the back and forth. That's the starter prompt. Once you have this done, you're going to then actually pass this off to a bigger model to synthesize. Reason being is that the conversation is done through O4 Mini High, which is a great model to have the conversation with. But when we want to synthesize this entire conversation, ensuring that we're not missing anything critical, I have O4 Mini High do the first synthesis, and then I run this through a bigger model to validate we're not missing anything important. And that's what this step is here. So you can either do this with Sonnet for um, or Opus 4, or you can do it with O3, either one or both, whatever you want. So here we have the conversation, and we're going to take that conversation, we're going to send in two things. First, we're going to send in the conversation itself, 
And then we're going to cut off this document here, which is the synthesized piece. And we're going to bring that in as well. I'm then going to prompt the AI and say, okay, can you compare this conversation with this synthesized document, checking to see if there's anything that we've missed? If there is anything that you feel like is critical for the AI, the specialist AI for taxes to know, then make sure you reintroduce and rewrite this synthesized document into something that's more detailed and more relevant for that AI. So then out pops that finalized document that's going to have the context that we can then pass to our tax specialist. And the same thing applies to O3, same process where you synthesize and resynthesize the information to ensure we're not missing anything. Quick pause. If you're interested, below is a free link to a 30-day AI insight series. So if you want to get more practical tips just like this on how to apply AI to your business, as well as your day-to-day -day work, click that free 30 days of no BS, no fluff, practical AI tips. Now, back to the video. Okay, so now that we've made what's implicit in our head explicit to the AI, now it's time to create a system prompt. And to write the system prompt, instead of doing it yourself, uh, I think that's kind of an outdated way of doing things, you should outsource it to AI, at least the first draft. And we have two options here. So you can either do it with Claude or you can do it with ChatGPT. So this should be 03, 03. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the context from the conversation that we had previously, that's that synthesized document here. We're going to pass it off to the AI to then have it write a system prompt for us that they can then bake this into the prompt that would be for the tax specialist. So we're going to convert this context document into a system prompt that's informed, that's structured, and that achieves our specific goals. And then that's going to be baked into the back end of our AI that's going to be our specialized consultant. In this context would be taxes. And you can do this either with ChatGPT or Claude. And I think down here I have a prompt. I do, yeah, here. So here's the prompt that we're going to use for um, starting this um, kind of creation of the system prompt. So here we're going to start with context. And this starts out as, here's a doc that covers a lot about my business, most of which I think a tax specialist would want to know. So they're able to provide me with a hyper-tailored advice on tax savings. So this is kind of the context of what we're giving them. Then we give them the task. I need you to research prompt prompting best practices as of today's date. So this is brackets where you would insert your today's date because you want the prompt and the best practices to be associated to today, not something from 2023 or 2024. And then the um, for this specific model, so we're specifying the model we're going to prompt because each model has a different type of best practices for prompting. So you prompt Gemini 2.5 Pro different than you would prompt O3, different than when you would prompt Sonnet 4. They all have different preferences. You want to make sure the model is researching those best practices for that specific model as of that date. And then it, then it says, I want you to create a prompt that'll act as a system prompt for a custom AI tailored to giving me tax savings advice. So we're tailoring it to the specific type of persona achieving a certain type of task. And then we give it a constraint at the very end, stating that they should always research up-to-date tax savings tactics, they referring to the AI. So this they is referring to the AI in this second point for the task, and uh, before recommending anything. Also, they should always reference the docs I've shared here, the context we've shared previously, as well as all the relevant docs in their knowledge base before providing advice. So the constraint we're setting here is basically stating they should research common and modern tax savings advice before they give me any advice. Also, they should reference my context and my scenarios, both in the knowledge base and the system prompt, before they give me any advice. So everything should be hyper-tailored to me and also up-to-date. That's what the, this prompt here is doing, and that's the system prompt it's going to create for us. Future Dylan here. So quick caveat to all of this. If you're not comfortable sharing your data with these providers, don't do it. Um, but you can if you want. And that's kind of the caveat. Uh, some of these providers have different tiers you can purchase. So they have Teams and Enterprise and both Anthropic and ChatGPT or OpenAI. And they mitigate the amount of leakage of data. So your data is not trained for their AI models, that data set. And also your data can be deleted after 30 days or so, depending on the provider you're at. So for those that are going to get upset about the data privacy issue, here's your caveat. You can have fun in the comments and onto the video. So now that we have our system prompt from our AI, we may want to make some minor edits. So you can make some edits to the system prompt if you prefer to. But if you're happy with it, you can then move on to the next step, which is creating the project. So here we can create a project either in Claude or GPT. I prefer to do both for tasks that I would label as critical and important that I want to have multiple perspectives on. In that case, I would do in this, this situation. And here we have two examples of what projects look like inside of each one of the UIs. So here we have Claude and here we have ChatGPT. They're both very similar. So here at the top left or top right, sorry, this is going to be where the, the system prompt goes. So you'll copy and paste the system prompt above for Claude and put it inside this section. Here we have the knowledge base where you put additional PDFs. So these are the PDFs you would put in both the context synthesized document you've gotten from the interview, as well as any knowledge documents you have associated to the task. So for me, that could be incorporation documents, previous tax filings, et cetera. Um, and if you're unsure as to what to put in here, once you've put in your system instructions or your system prompt for the AI, you can ask, that could be the first question you ask, saying, hey, 
you know, you have this information on me, you have these, uh, this context, and this, this specific scenario for taxes, what are some additional documents you would need from me that would inform your um, future advice and future strategies that could help you tailor it more towards me? It might give you a list of documents. If so, then you can go off and find those, find what you can, put that in there, and then use that as a base. So that's the cloud setup. Uh, ChatGPT is very similar. So you just have here your knowledge base, which is where the add files are. And here are the add instructions, which is where the system prompt goes. Same exact thing. And I've gotten some people asking, you know, why don't you use custom GPTs? Well, you can use a custom GPT if you'd like instead of a project. They're very similar. Um, you have the model selection for custom GPTs. You have some of the features. You don't have deep research in custom GPTs, but you have the other ones for the features, such as web search, um, et cetera, et cetera, um, Canvas, things like that. But outside of that, the main difference that I've noticed between projects and GPTs for ChatGPT specifically is custom GPTs are publicly shareable. So if there are people within your organization or outside of your organization that you would like to share this customized AI with, you can do that through custom GPTs. But in this case, this is obviously specific to me and my taxes. So um, as a ex cybersecurity person, I don't want to share that information too broadly with too many strangers. So um, we're going to keep that to a project for now because that's more private and it's included to my, my workspace. Now that we have this set up, I like to start with my questions when when asking questions to my advisor, my AI consultant, I like to start broad and then go narrow. And that's what this visual represents is we're going to start with broad questions to get general insights from the AI. And then we'll dive, we'll kind of dig into each one of those responses we get that are relevant and interesting to us. And here's a starter question that we can ask. So as of today's date, what are some common tax saving strategies that I could benefit from? Base your research and advice on my specific context. There's two things we're doing here. So one, is we're making sure that it's grounded in today's advice with the today's date bracket. So we're going to put in right now, it's July 9th. So I'd put that in. And then also we're stating that the context needs to be relevant to us. So they need to reference both the system instructions and the knowledge base to ensure that any advice they give is relevant to me. One addition I could make here that I would probably make is asking it to be opinionated. And this is something I would probably already put in the system instructions above. I've not mentioned it, so I want to, I want to mention it now is I would state the AI should be hyper opinionated and the advice should be very practical and something that can be applied today or in a short time frame. Reason being is that oftentimes the AI will be very agreeable, so it won't be too opinionated and also won't want to be um, too subjective, but we want to force that subjectivity out of it so we can get practical advice. And then on the other end, sometimes the advice is hyper long-term, maybe it's really long-term or strategic or whatever else that's not relevant. We want to apply things now, this month, this year. So we want to Put those constraints in the system prompt as well. And in the end, when we get our response from our AI, we're super satisfied with it. And we've also researched it because in this state, we're probably going to do some more research after we get some responses from the AI to ensure that it's accurate and or timely and relevant for us. After we validated it ourselves, we're then going to pass this off to a human. This is what the DNA represents to have them validated as well, especially if it's a use case associated to legal taxes, etc. I highly recommend sending this off to an advisor. So that's what I did in this case where I saved the 10K. I passed it off to my accountant. He said, hey, this strategy actually is relevant and it's relevant for you. So let's, let's apply this because we can save this amount of money. And that's exactly why I applied it. I had AI assist, but I had then a human validate. This is critical, at least for now, as AI still is somewhat not perfect. But as it evolves, we may become less um, reliant on human advice. But for the time being, I highly recommend advising a human, especially for things that are critical, such as legal and taxes. All right. And with that being said, that's it, internet. If you enjoyed this, reshare it with your friends. And also below is a link to a free 30-day AI insight series. So if you sign up, you're going to get practical tips just like this for 30 days, giving you tips on how to apply this into your day-to-day -day work and also how to apply it to your business to automate your different processes internally. And with that being said, internet, I'll see you next time.